Doom is a game that irrevocably changed gaming, and we can still see so many of the conventions brought forth by it in new games today. And that's why GameRanks is about to bring you 10 Doom facts you probably didn't know. Number 10, Wolfenstein and Doom actually share some interesting bits of lore. For instance, in Wolfenstein RPG, which actually came out in 2008, the Nazis summon the Harbinger of Doom. The game's protagonist, William Joseph, or BJ Blazkowicz, rips off the demon's hand and leg and sends it back to hell. The demon basically makes the promise that it's going to make the lives of all of BJ's descendants much more difficult. Who are BJ's descendants? Well, Commander Keen is one. Commander Keen's dad is named Arthur Kenneth Blaze, but Blaze happens to be a show name, Blaskowitz being his real name. Arthur Kenneth Blaze is on television, you see. They name their son William Joseph, or BJ, but they call him Billy. Thanks to Doom RPG, which actually came out before Wolfenstein RPG, we know that the Doom Marine, who is the protagonist of all of the mainline Doom games and Doom RPG, actually has happens to be B.J. Blazkowicz III. They effectively connected Wolfenstein, Commander Keen, and Doom into a single continuity. Number 9 cover artist Don Ivan Punchatz was given the option of a percentage of the game's profits or a straight fee when he created the cover of Doom, one of the most iconic covers in gaming history. He opted to take the straight fee on account, really, id Software was a freaking startup at the time, and he had no idea it was going to be a massive hit. I don't know if you've ever done any and creative as a job, but eating becomes a priority, and I completely get it. Sadly, Penchance died at 73 in 2009, but he wasn't the only person to make some kind of art for the game Doom working basically for free. Manny Charlton of Nazareth wrote a song about Doom and sent it to id Software on a cassette tape with the note, kick some demon butt to this. The song also appears on one of Charlton's albums. Number 8. In the mid-90s, Doom was so popular that it actually was installed on more PCs than Windows 95. This obviously got Bill Gates fairly excited, and for a time he actually wanted to purchase id Software. Obviously, if gaming made Doom more popular than an operating system that everything uses, one could understand. He was so excited about Doom, he did this really weird presentation about how Windows 95 was the quote-unquote game platform, vowing to clean up the DOS mess. Which I don't know if you've ever tried to play games on DOS, He's not wrong. It was a mess. Not buying id Software was actually part of that. Instead, Bill Gates worked with id Software to port the game to Windows 95. Now when I say worked with, I mean he created an internal Microsoft team to do the port for them. Obviously, they did that to attract people to the Windows platform for gaming, but the team itself was led by Gabe Newell. This project was what sowed the seeds for a lot of stuff, including the Xbox existing. But more importantly, if this hadn't happened, Gabe Newell maybe not would have gotten into gaming, at least from a programming side. He may not have recognized the organizational problems that existed in Microsoft's gaming division and left and created Valve, which has changed gaming irrevocably. Number 7. For quite a while, the first-person shooter genre was known as Doom Clones. And you know what? That's fair. In fact, most genres start that way. It may not be to the degree that the first-person shooter genre was called that, but often genre are created when a single game kicks off a new gameplay element that no one thought of before and revolves the entire game around it. And certainly Wolfenstein 3D was before Doom. But one could almost say that Wolfenstein 3D was a test bed for id Software in creating Doom. Doom was significantly more advanced than Wolfenstein 3D and pretty much popularized the 3D game, period. In fact, I would go ahead and say that Doom was probably the single biggest thing that has ever happened in PC gaming. So yes, when people basically made engines that were essentially there to be like Doom and provide a different spin on it, being visual or storytelling or whatever, Duke Nukem 3D still plays a whole hell of a lot like Doom. Number 6. In the original Doom, there's a cyber demon with a mechanical arm and leg. Hmm, sounds very much like that Harbinger of Doom in Wolfenstein RPG. Does it? You know, the one we were talking about at the top of the video? Now, obviously, this was all interconnected after the fact, but it's the same sprite as Doom's Cyber Demon. As you might recall in number 10, I said that Harbinger swore revenge on the descendants of BJ Blazkowicz, and although Commander Keen got off scotch-free, pretty much every incarnation of the Doom Marine is a Blazkowicz in some way, unless you count the random Doom novels, but I don't. Before the demon was banished to another dimension or hell or whatever you want to explain it as, BJ Blazkowicz the first, 
chopped off the limbs that you see replaced with cybernetic limbs in the Doom Sprite. Now there's no explicit narrative, and I think that a lot of these continuity things were really kind of just thought up in the last decade to create a shared universe, but frankly, I like the idea of an id shared universe. Number five, John Carmack, the co-founder of id Software and the creator of Wolfenstein, Doom, Quake, and just a programming machine, is also a rocket scientist. There's probably not a whole lot of self-taught aerospace engineers out there, but after he conquered the gaming world in 2000, he decided he was going to do just that. He founded a company called Armadillo Airspace that eventually competed in a NASA contest known as the Lunar Lander Challenge and won first place. The company is not currently operating, but is not formally shut down either. So who knows, maybe eventually they'll send a spaceship out filled with Doom Marines and, I don't know, not fight any demons, because those are definitely not real. But if it does turn out that they are real, remember Armadillo Airspace. That's the way to go. Number four, the sound that's made by imps and former humans when they die, that horrible, low-pitched sound. It's actually a two-humped camel's mating call. When I first heard that, I didn't necessarily entirely believe it, so I spent a little bit of time looking into footage of camels making that awful sound. That's not awful in a scary sense by any means, it's just a low sound. Anybody can go, Ooh. But if you've ever wondered why a bunch of camels show up whenever you play Doom with that thirsty look in their eyes, well, now you know. Number three, there is a ridiculous map called nuts 3 wad Nothing about that sounds right, but I don't know how intentional it is, because the map itself is basically just an arena with 12,263 monsters placed on a map. There are arch vials, and they resurrect monsters, so really you could end up with a very large amount of monsters to fight over time. Way more than 12,263. There's also secret areas, and that's basically how you beat it. You have to do something involving them, and there are videos on the internet of people beating all 12,263 monsters. Number two, Doom, the very first first-person shooter to have an online multiplayer mode operated on a TCP and UDP port of 666. Ooh, so edgy. Careful, you might get cut on those um, edges there. No, but I get it because it involves demons and, and being they were probably among the first to do something like that, it kind of makes sense that there would be in-jokes between the programmers where they go, <laughs> let's make the porn 666. I get it. It's not as douchey as if somebody did that today and posted about it on Twitter and expected everybody to laugh and retweet it and get offended when that doesn't happen and the entire internet collectively yawns at it. Remember, this did happen in the early 90s. And finally, number one, a lot of the guns in Doom were, believe it or not, modeled on guns that the developers found in Toys R Us, meaning nerf and generic nerf because, let's face it, are there nerf competitors? Who knows? I don't recall there ever being any, so whatever. Just basically taking weapons that are super colorful and shoot foam darts and covering them in dingy, dirty, used looking metal was essentially what brought us some of the most iconic video game weapons of all time. Now it's important to note not all of the weapons, but several of them are. So the next time you pick up a BFG, consider the possibility that it's actually an NERF. And that concludes today's Doom history lesson. I'm absolutely positive you didn't know all of this stuff. If you did, I'd love to hear about it. Tell me in the comments but otherwise, let's use the comment section to just talk about how great Doom is and how weird some of these facts are. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button, and if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. As always, we thank you very much for watching this. You can follow me on Twitter, at FalconTheHero, and we will see you next time, right here on GameRanks.